chartreuse, greenish yellow, yellowish green, whatever you call that pigment that lies somewhere in between green and yellow. Anglers know how artful that pigment can be at drawing strikes from game fish. I still remember watching Jimmy Houston roll a chartreuse spinnerbait through a canvas of muddy water one Saturday many years ago. And I even etched my first largemouth bass catch on a chartreuse striking grass frog just like this. Since then my tackle box has been plastered with chartreuse colors and I've used it to tempt everything from Chesapeake stripers to California spotties. But I've always wondered who came up with that crazy color and just what makes it so effective at attracting fin predators. Well, today on Retro Bass, and we're going to answer that question and many more as we take a deep dive into the history of the color chartreuse. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassing. Before we get started, I do want to pause and give a huge thank you to Terry Battisti over at the Bass Fishing Archives for collaboration on this history of video. If you haven't checked out the Bass Fishing Archives website, well, it is the sole source for a bass fishing history and contains pages and pages of bass fishing content. Everything from bass boat catalogs, bass tackle catalogs, vintage electronics, and one of my personal favorites, retro ads. Terry used his bass fishing archive sleuth skills to uncover over a half dozen historical articles that shed some light on the roots of chartreuse as a fish catcher. In addition to that, he sent along some high-res images of a 1974 Okie Bug catalog that I know you guys are going to enjoy. As we continue our History of series, look for more collaboration with Bass Fishing Archives. But in the meantime, check out Terry's two different YouTube channels. First, the video version of Bass Fishing Archives. And second, the Big Bass Podcast with co-host Ken Duke. The color chartreuse originates from a French liqueur by the same name crafted by the Carthusian monks since 1737. The liqueur, known as the Elixir of Life, was named after the monks Grand Chartreuse Monastery, which is located in the Chartreuse Mountains in southeastern France. The liqueur was sold in two different varieties with two slightly different colors, but you'll notice the tint of the liqueur lacks the fluorescence of the chartreuse that we know and love today. And the 1960 Universal film The Chartreuse Caboose also featured a muted yellow-green train car. When bass fishermen think of chartreuse, however, they likely think of the more neon-yellow version, which can be traced back to the 1930s when a University of California student named Bob Switzer found himself confined to a dark room while recovering from a head injury that blurred his vision. There in the dark, Switzer, with his chemistry student brother, mixed murine eyewash with alcohol and shellac until they formulated a substance that glowed fluorescent under blacklight. After perfecting paint pigments that retain their luminous qualities in the daylight, the Switzer brothers patented Day Glow Fluorescence in 1937. The US military reportedly purchased $12 million worth of Day Glow paint in World War II, and soon Day Glow colors could be found on everything from commercial advertisements to album covers to the latest fashion. Then, in the early 1970s, a New York ophthalmologist named Stephen Solomon scientifically confirmed the visibility of our favorite fluorescent chartreuse when he researched the most visible colors for emergency vehicles such as fire engines. Solomon reasoned that traditionally red fire engines would not be visible in low light conditions as a result of the Purkinje effect, which states that reds will appear darker relative to other colors as light levels decrease. And in 1973, 
around the same time that Rayo Breckenridge was eking out a victory over Bill Dance at the third annual Bassmaster Classic, Solomon published his research concluding that sparkling bright lime green paint would boost the nighttime visibility of emergency vehicles over the standard red. As a result, fluorescent chartreuse green was soon adopted as the color of choice of fire engines in many parts of the United States. And fluorescent yellow lures and neon track suits were soon to follow. I'm not quite sure how he did it, but half an hour after we first discussed this project, Terry over at the Bass Station Archives sent a half dozen 60-year-old news articles outlining some early chartreuse catches. Without photographic support, it is hard to say if these descriptions refer to the actual chartreuse that we know and love today, or one of the more early muted versions. The first historical report we found of a chartreuse lure catch was in a 1954 fishing report from the Macon News. Georgia angler Larry Kitchens caught three largemouth bass, 13 brim, and two jacks on a fly rod and a chartreuse colored popping bug. In a 1955 edition of the Daily News, while anglers on Chautauqua Lake reported success with yellow, lime green, orange, black, and chartreuse hand-tied jigs. I wonder if chartreuse first gained popularity with flying jig tires, as a 1960 edition of the Longview News reported that anglers picked up largemouth bass on, quote, yellow and chartreuse bass flies. One of my favorites was an outdoor article in the 1960 edition of the Baytown Sun, and it gives a little insight into favorite artificial bait colors of the day and this one I've just got to read. Don't know whether the color is here to appeal to women, as car manufacturers do, or for the catch em effect. Anyway, you can buy artificial bait today in coal black or all white, in polka dot, black dots on white or white dots on black, plus a mixture of other colors. You can buy them in solids and various shades of yellow, green, gold, blue, chartreuse, orange, gray, tan, yellow, or what have you. In a 1966 article in the Memphis Press Simtar, outdoor writer Buck Patton describes local success with new, quote, pastel colors, including a chartreuse lure with a green skirt. And in 1968, Oregon salmon anglers were apparently growing hip to chartreuse as the Statesman Journal reported solid catches of Chinook on, quote, chartreuse hotshot lures. Lastly, Terry also uncovered a great photo from 1969 featuring Charles Spence, who used one of his own chartreuse Strike King spinnerbaits to take a seven pound largemouth bass from Mud Lake on the Mississippi Tennessee state line. One of my personal favorite things about the bass fishing archives is the incredible time spent on collecting and scanning vintage fishing lure catalogs. In the research for this video, I came across a 1974 Okie Bug catalog on the Bass Fishing Archives website that I thought would be a great example of that transition period from yellow to chartreuse as a popular artificial lure color. As we flip through the notable pages of this catalog, you'll notice there's definitely some inconsistency or should I say color confusion from lure company to lure company and even lure to lure. Appropriately, the first lure featured is Don Butler's own creation, the SOB Small Okie Bug Spinnerbait, a lure on which he won the 1972 Bassmaster Classic. First off, let's not overlook the fact that you could have gotten a dozen of these beauties back in the day for $11.60 or about $0.92 cents per lure. The color chart gives an early look at some of the early chartreuse yellow lime struggle as we see solid skirts available in fluorescent chartreuse, yellow, and lime. It's hard to tell in 2D, but I imagine even Don Butler himself would have a hard time discerning a chartreuse okie bug from a lime one. The color confusion continues on the next okie bug page where one struggles to tell the difference between chartreuse and yellow soft plastic spin bug bodies. On the jelly worm page, a Tom Mann managed to circumvent the yellow or chartreuse debate altogether 
by simply offering fruitful colors like apple, lemon, and lime. However, the man's Wooly Bully spinnerbait was offered in both yellow and chartreuse. The makers of the Hellbender crankbait apparently weren't hip to the chartreuse title and offered two different forms of yellow. One, a yellow ghost, which resembles a more traditional yellow, and also a yellow with black ribs, which has more of that limey tint to it. The Rogers Humming Rat was offered in both yellow and fluorescent yellow, which anyone could argue is chartreuse by today's standards. Finally, one of my favorites, the Fliptail Worm Spread featured both a chartreuse and a yellow, but I wouldn't bet my bait bucket I would be able to tell those two apart. So is it yellow? Is it lime? Is it chartreuse? Well, according to the 1974 Okie Bug catalog, it was all the above. Now let's talk about the science of sight. The eye is made up of two different photoreceptors, one called rods and the other cones. Rods enable pigmentation in low light conditions, but don't aid in color visualization. Think how hard it is to distinguish different colors in a dimly lit room. Cones, on the other hand, allow us to see the color of objects around us. Humans generally have three different types of cones, red, green, and blue. And each is sensitive to a different wavelength of visible light. Basically, the more types of cones you have, the more colors you can see. Many birds, insects, and fish, and apparently 12% of women, have four different types of cones and thus can see 100% more colors than the rest of us. The mantis shrimp possesses an amazing 16 types of cones, so their ability to interpret subtle color variations must be exponentially better than the rest of us. Conversely, dogs only have two types of cones and thus can see fewer colors. Interestingly, colorblind humans have one or more compromised cone types thus leading to reduced color perception. So what about our subject, the largemouth bass? Brown first studied largemouth bass vision in 1937, finding that bass could discern between green and red from all other colors, yet they had difficulty telling yellow from white and black from blue. More recently in 2019, researchers applied more modern methods to Brown's work confirming that largemouth bass do indeed have dichromatic vision, meaning they only have two types of cones, green and red. The study concluded that largemouth bass rarely confuse green with red, but often confuse black with blue and yellow with white. In other words, that blue or black jig or that chartreuse and white skirt likely appear as a solid colored object to our colorblind bass. So what makes chartreuse so special? Some say chartreuse stands out above all other colors in stained water, while others claim that fluorescent chartreuse is actually one of the more lifelike colors around, mimicking the natural hues of bait fish. I can't say which of those theories is correct. All I know is that whenever I tie on a chartreuse colored lure, a lifetime of catches washes over my mind's eye. So to all the bass and buds out there, I hope that you get to paint your next fishing masterpiece with the color chartreuse. If you enjoyed this History of series, please drop a comment down in the video comment section and let me know what other lore or topic you would like to see covered next on this little series. And if you're looking for some more old school content, you can click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. And until then, keep the carpet side up and definitely... Fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.